Hi everyone, my name is Adele Burden and this is Jana Thomas. Before we get started today, we're going to quickly introduce ourselves. Um, I am a Cape Town born violinist and I'm currently the education manager of the Masilale Music Programme, which is an, in, an initiative of the Cape Town Philharmonic Orchestra, which provides access to music education in the greater Western Cape area. My work as a violin teacher exists mainly in the spheres of youth development and community music. And as a violinist and performer, I perform with various ensembles around Cape Town. I study my BMAS degree at Stellenbosch University, uh, focusing on solo violin performance. And my master's also at Stellenbosch University in chamber music performance, um, which is where John and I uh, played in the University of Stellenbosch String Quartet which was a huge foundation for our growth together, not mm -hmm. only as friends, but also as performers and educators. Mm -hmm. um, I spent two years in Oslo, Norway, studying violin pedagogy. Hello everyone, I'm Jana. Um, I am also a teacher and a performer. A little bit about my background is I was not born in South Africa. I was born in the US, in Washington, DC, but I grew up in the state of West Virginia. Um, I have a very diverse musical and cultural background. Um, the, on the tertiary level, I began studying at West Virginia University in uh, music education for two and a half years before coming to South Africa, uh, where I finally transferred and then finished um, my bachelor's or my BMAS in performance and then also did a master's in chamber music and community music. Um, I'm currently a teacher at a high school in Stellenbosch. Um, I have had the privilege of teaching in diverse, um, yeah, a range of community music programs and also schools in the Western Cape. And I am pursuing further studies um, in which I find myself engaging in platforms uh, discussing topics and issues relevant to marginalized communities, which comes very close to home for me. Before we continue, we would like to say a huge thank you to Marika Meyer and the team at the South African String Convention for inviting us to be faculty. It's been a huge honor and we have had the most amazing time working together on this presentation. So today we're going to give our presentation in the form of a few reflections based on our joint experiences. As Odie mentioned, we had the absolute privilege of studying together, of performing together across various settings. At one point we were even colleagues um, with our classrooms side by side. And over the past 11 years, um, Odie and I have been having various conversations around this topic of how to bridge the gap between our classical pedagogy and our students' cultural heritage, as well as their pre-existing musical knowledge or backgrounds within their communities. And one event that really um, stood out to us in our own um, lives as musicians in this area was when we um, were accepted to participate in a string quartet course in a festival in Brazil. And in our preparation, we somehow missed the memo that there was um, a, a concert that started the whole festival in which each country uh, was to represent their country with a musical item. So when we got to Brazil, we realized we had about 24 hours to put together a presentation mm -hmm. to encapsulate and represent all of what South Africa <laughs> is. And to say that I and we found this to be quite a responsibility um, would probably be a little bit of an understatement. Yeah. Um, but it was, we found it quite um, an overwhelming task, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, even though we had prepared all of this repertoire, um, we hadn't brought sheet music with us <laughs> for, uh, for, you know, for this item. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we were just kind of like, it was quite overwhelming because we were faced with how do four of us that are completely different from each other mm -hmm. um, use our instruments to adequately represent South Africa mm -hmm. and all of its diversity. Um, and how do we do that when what we've been doing so far was Mozart and Beethoven and Shostakovich? Mm. Um, so we kind of find ourselves found ourselves a little bit out of our depth. Mm. I think it was really a moment of truth for us. 
and one moment in this concert uh, that we will forever remember is we went on stage uh, right after Colombia, which was a group of about 50 people um, in full traditional dress. Um, it was brass, strings, dancers, everything. Um, and it was just the four of us. And we walked on stage and the auditorium was silent. You could have heard a pin drop. Um, and there was a sense of anticipation as um, I believe we were the first ensemble to ever come from South Africa and quite possibly from Africa to this um, to this course and word had gotten around and so they were waiting in anticipation for what we were going to present and we had also um, Odie had put together a slideshow and we had arranged to the best of our ability a musical offering um, that I'm actually quite proud of mm -hmm. we were pushed um, and challenged to be quite creative and in a moment where um, the picture of Nelson Mandela came up on the screen, the whole auditorium erupted in applause and they really celebrated what we represented, um, even in the little bit that we represented, but as each of us from very different backgrounds um, representing part of what South Africa is. And it was such a special moment for, for both of us. Yeah. And, um, what we what we then started talking about after that was that um, even despite our shared you know knowledge and experience and years and years of classical training behind us, um, when it came time to use all of those skills to um, represent our heritage and our culture, we felt that we weren't prepared enough. Mm. Um, and then moving on from that, you know, thinking about ourselves as educators, mm. um, we realized that that was a position that we wouldn't want our students to find themselves in. Mm. Um, that we would want to have their classical skills that we, you know, that we train them, that we mm. give to them, uh, aid them and be a tool mm. to be able to express their heritage, to be able to express you know, the musical culture. Mm. Throughout our teaching experience in the Western Cape, we've been able to work with many kinds of students um, from a range of geographical locations, um, coming from a spectrum of mm. schools, ranging from uh, no fee paying schools, private schools, public schools, um, and with all of this comes uh, kids from a plethora of cultural backgrounds. Mm -hmm. And quite early on in my, my teaching career, I was in a group class. And in this specific class, I had kids from a colored community and also children from a closer community. And I had set homework. They had just learned how to play the first two fingers. And I had set a little homework task for them to work out how to play Myriad Little Lamb by ear for the next lesson. And so the next lesson came and I realized that there was a bit of a problem mm. where my uh, the kids from the colored community were able to do the homework, no problem. The kids from this specific Tosa community didn't know what Myriad Little Lamb was and so weren't able to do the homework. Mm. This was a huge realization for me. I I kind of just took it for granted that maybe a little lamb is, you know, everybody knows. <laughs> um, but what I had to do was have a little discussion and find a song that we all had in common, mm. which actually turned out to be Fira Jacques mm. uh, for the kids from the colored community and the same song, but in Iskosa for my mm. other kids, um, which was the same song, but had a little bit of a different lilt the way that it was sung. Um, and performed but yeah that that was such a monumental discovery for me mm. yeah we started having a, quite a few conversations on asking our students uh, various questions about their communities and music making in their communities and what um, what our students were exposed to on the daily level in regards to music and what did they listen to and I think we 
I don't want to say we were surprised, but we were quite surprised at the extreme diversity <laughs> of platforms and also um, musical backgrounds that our students had. Um, and I think my own experience, a lot of people would think that perhaps um, me growing up in the US, that in my community there would be a culture of classical music. But in fact, within my own community, I when I played, it wasn't uh, classical music as it really wasn't a reference point at all. We didn't have an orchestra or classical ensembles. Um, in my community, the violin was linked to that of um, bluegrass. If people saw me with it, they would be like, oh, you play the fiddle. Um, but there was no real reference to classical music that always happened outside of my community. Um, so questions that we began asking our students um, in their lessons were, what platforms um, are there in your community where music um, is being made? Is it church? Is it family gatherings? Um, what music do you listen to on a daily level? What is your reference point? Um, and in that way, we began adding an element um, of their community within our classical lessons, um, which helped us get a better understanding um, of their overall background. It also gave us exposure to different types of music making and the diversity of musical expression in, in the Western Cape, um, as well as helping us to take our classical technique and um, include it into the music that our students were engaging in more more on a daily level yeah. than just our lessons. Yeah, and I think I realized how important it is to uh, respect mm -hmm. the musical background that a, a child has before they come to you and stand in front of you for their first violin lesson. Mm -hmm. um, because that will, uh, it sets the tone for mm -hmm. what you can reach together um, from that point on. Mm -hmm. I think there's a few reasons um, just based in my short time of engaging on this topic. Uh, a few reason, reasons why it's relevant. Um, one being that as a violin and viola teacher, I would like to train my students to be able to not only perform in the um, classical solo setting or orchestral setting or chamber music, um, but also to be able to engage in whatever platform um, that they find themselves in musically, that they can take out their instrument and with confidence mm -hmm. um, have the tools um, from their classical training to engage with whatever setting that they find themselves in. Um, I think in my own life, the violin and learning to play was not only just learning to play classical music, but it was a platform um, and it was a form of expression for me, and as I've also developed in my and grown and become more confident in my cultural identity, realizing that it's an incredible platform. Mm -hmm. um, so being able to encourage our students um, that their background and their cultural heritage is not totally separate separate from their classical training, I think is quite important. Yeah, absolutely. Um, since we are in Heritage Month, <laughs> um, I think it's also um, really important for us to be able to use our skills gained mm -hmm. from our classical training to play the music that we've grown up hearing, mm -hmm. play the music uh, that's inherent to our culture and our heritage, um, preserve what it is to be a musical South African. Mm -hmm. So in conclusion, um, this conversation in the form of various reflections is by no means comprehensive, um, but rather us opening up um, a few areas that we have been discussing and that we felt is quite important for us as um, educators, performers, and personally from our various backgrounds to actually um, discuss um, with each other. Yeah, and I know that this is an ongoing conversation mm. um, where we're constantly sharing our experiences and trying to find solutions to various things that come up and we would love to hear from anybody who has navigated the same kind of space who has uh, any 
thoughts or experiences um, on things that we've touched on today. Mm. Uh, we would really like to thank you for taking the time to watch our video and we look forward to future conversations. Yeah.